Prior to the invention of the metric system, doing unit conversions required a lot of memorizing. If you wanted to convert measurements relating to distance, you needed to remember that there were 12 inches per foot, 3 feet in a yard, 1,760 yards in a mile, and or 5,280 feet in a mile. If you wanted to convert measurements related to volume, you needed to remember 3 teaspoons are in a tablespoon, 16 tablespoons in a cup, 2 cups in a pint, 2 pints in a quart, and 4 quarts in a gallon. And if you wanted to convert measurements relating to mass, you had to remember 1 ounce is 437 and a half grains, 16 ounces to a pound, 1 stone is 14 pounds, 100 weight is not 100 pounds, but 112 pounds, and 1 long ton is 20 hundred weights. What a mess. Far too much to remember. And surely you must be thinking that there's enough smart people in this world to say enough with that craziness. We definitely need a more intuitive system. And indeed you'd be right. The metric system was made to work with our number system so that most conversions just require the movement of a decimal. Much, much smarter and easier. The metric system has been adopted by almost all the countries in the world, and the only reason that we're still exposed to it here and there is that there's a few holdouts, including part of the U.S. Most of your course will be using the metric system, as it is the system adopted by the majority of the world's scientists and technologists. We'll only mention the imperial system enough to get you used to the fact that you'll run into it as well in your day-to-day -day life. Unfortunately, sorry for that. Okay, well, back to the metric system. Here's what you need to remember to work with the metric system relating to distance, volume, mass, and more. It starts with this K is for kilo, H is for hecto, then deco, the blank is for the base unit, deci, centi, and milli. Now, this is a lot like the SOKOTOA that you learned in TRIG, a nice little acronym tool that makes life much easier. Unlike SOKOTOA, we can't really make a funny-sounding word of it, really. Could durkum. So instead, most people come up with a little mnemonic to help remember this. A popular one is cats hate dogs, blank, dogs chase mice. So cats hate dogs, dogs chase mice. And once you have this down, metric conversions are a cinch. Let's do an example. 12 kilometers equals how many meters? In this case, we're talking about distances. So the root unit here would be meters. So we note that right here. Now we're going from kilo meters to the base unit meters. So let's figure out how many moves are involved. From kilo, one, two, three. So three moves to the right to get from kilo to the base unit, in this case meters. Therefore, we just do the same thing to the decimal. That is, we move the decimal to the right three times. And in this case, we need some zero placeholders in the empty spaces. Therefore, we can see that 12 kilometers is the same as 12,000 meters. Let's try another. What if we needed to convert 1,200 grams to kilograms? Again, we'd think cats hate dogs, dogs chase mice, and in this case, the base unit is grams, so we'll put a G right here. Moving from the base unit, that is grams, to kilo involves us moving left, one, two, three. So again, we do the same thing with a decimal in our number, moving left, one, two, three. And we're left with 1.2 kilograms. So we see that 1,200 grams is the same as 1.2 kilograms. So we can do conversions with any metric base and the principle here still holds. Nice and easy. 
So in this tutorial, we discussed unit conversions. We quickly overviewed the reasons for the metric system, and then we discussed a nice quick way to do metric conversions. A little practice, and you'll be a metric conversion expert.